just wanted to do a video for all the other spirit pack owners who wanted to weather theirs um, and add some um, depth to their packs. I just wanted to show you a finished one. This one is kind of done the proper way, which was it was matte painted black first over the plastic gives it a much nicer look um i also went in and added a whole new connection here because you just get the red one you should have the blue one too it's actually just made out of that piece is like split loom split loom and then just a wood little block glued onto it it's actually screwed onto there and then the uh um, the little sticker goes over the two little screws so you don't see it um, obviously different, the ribbon cable with the kind of, um, pro pack, spirit pack, the one that has the extra one was a little bit shorter than this. So I added a little bit bigger ribbon cable, just, you know, makes it looks a little bit nicer. Um, so I'm going to show you the one I'm about to work on, but I wanted to show you this addition. If you want to take time out doing that on the other one, um, because he's going to be getting the HasLab pack, so I didn't want to put that kind of time in on it. Um, but I wanted to show you. Also adding in the actual uh, different resistor and then the crank, uh, both 3D printed. Um, it was just shaved off with a Dremel tool and then glued on like a dowel piece. Just adding those little details, I feel like makes it not only more movie accurate, but it just gives it a little bit nicer quality details than the straight off the shelf, not to mention the weathering, which I'll show you kind of how I did it. Um, so let me swap over to the other pack. Okay, move this one out of the way. Other pack here. Okay, so what you're gonna want is you're gonna want some black and brown paint. Um, you can use anything. You could use, I've been using like folk art, but any kind of acrylic paint that you get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels, that's black will work for this. And this is just kind of um, giving it some dirt and grime without going nuts. Cause there's tons of people on there yeah, and there is in the internet slash um, any one of the Facebook groups where they weather theirs, but they either go way too heavy, usually on the silver paint, um, not so much on uh, the dirt weathering part. All right, so grab yourself like a janky kind of brush, um, and then you'll want some water. I use this for this all the time. That's why that water looks horrible. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you want a little bit more brown on your brush than black. You don't want it to be straight black. So I do about that much just to kind of get going. See, so it's like a really dark brown. And then get some water on it like that. So you just thin it down a little bit. And then what you're gonna end up doing is basically just kind of covering surfaces where grime would pick up, which is in the corner. So you, once you've got, um, you can add newer stickers, which would be great. Silver ones, I've done that to my pack. But um, regardless, you're gonna go over all of your stickers. And no, you're not gonna leave it that way. Obviously, we're gonna clean this off. Um, the important parts to grab and get the dirt on are all of the lines, or excuse me, wiring and um, the stickers because that's where it's going to show up the most because the the pack being this is like a plastic one that hasn't been primer coated like it really should be but it's winter and I'm not going to take that kind of time because he's getting one of the HasLab packs so this one's just kind of a temporary one and then I'm sure he'll pass it down to somebody else or kids okay so get a piece of um, paper towel get it wet and so it's just damp and then what you're going to do is you're just going to like damply kind of take off a lot of what you just put on it's a lot easier to do it when it's not on the sticker you're just kind of grabbing as much of the paint almost as you put on off but it's going to stay in the crevices and 
you're just kind of dabbing. You don't want a ton left on there. You want it to be really subtle because we'd like to think they wouldn't let their packs get this dirty. But you also want it to look like it's existed since 1984. So that's kind of where you want to go with that first part there. And we're going to come down here. I'm going to get more of this wire. Just to kind of give you an idea. And you're getting in here. And like your eye arm. This is on there. Now what I like to do up top here with this um, the top of the iron arm, I actually like to use some of the black, just straight black, because if you look at the pack that they had on, dis I don't know where it's on display at, but it's on gbfans.com, um, Bill Murray's Ghostbusters 2 pack, you can see like this is pretty much painted black, the whole thing is black, and then it's must have been aluminum obviously underneath, so it it wears off on the edges, so what I do is I paint that all black. I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I'm going to go back, take some of the dirt off the ion arm, or paint, I should say, and off the, the side there, so you can kind of see how that looks. And then what we'll do is we'll go, while that's drying up top, we'll go and put in some more of the paint all over this really get it good we'll do the same thing here with our our resistor on the side just gonna load it up really good this is the part that you can really just kind of do and redo over and over again it's the the adding the the silver that takes quite a bit more finesse than this part this you can just kind of, I'd rather you wipe off more the first time than not wipe off enough. Because, I mean, it does will rub off more later. So if you feel like you put too much on and you know, it dried and you're having a hard time getting it off, you can. What's cool about acrylic paint is after it's set for like a day, it hardens up a little bit and won't rub off as easily. But if you just put it on and it's dried, chances are you can get it off. So that looks pretty good. The blue looks pretty good. I know it's kind of subtle, but you can kind of see the difference there. Now we're going to focus on this top part here. Kind of show you as I do it. Okay, see how it's kind of dried some? It's not shiny in those parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of grab it off along the corners. Because I like it around the edge looking like, you know, wear marks, like it's actually the paint's been wore off in those areas. So that's what you're going for. Take some off of this here. And if you're really wanting to do it really accurately, grab the photos off of GB fans of Bill Murray's pack and you can look at how it's weathered, and then that way you can kind of see how much to take off or what the weathering looks like in areas, if you need like a, a reference. Um, all right, that looks pretty good. So you kind of get how to do the rest of the wires. So you're gonna do the same thing here and here. Um, I'll show you how we're gonna kind of do this clipper valve real quick. Grab some more paint. Like I said, just everything that you're, all your connections, you're just covering everything up really well. Get it nice and dirty with paint, in which you want to dry on some, so. Okay. Get on there pretty good. If I 
the stick the stickers not on there very well. Um, you can see this. I'm gonna hit this too. So this thing needs to be glued back down. Um, also, a nice little detail to add is adding this big giant flathead screw to your bumper. If you haven't already, it's it's a quick little added detail that kind of gives it a little better look. All right. I've done about as much as I want to as far as stuff. Now I'm going to come back and start hitting it with the paper towel. Okay, well, that one's not quite dry yet. Let's touch this a smidge, do the wiring a little bit. You do got to give it a minute to dry. Just a little bit. You want it to kind of grab. Take it all off. I said this part's the part you can take as much as you want off and then if it's too much you can add back on or excuse me if it's too little you can add back on i'll have to fix the sticker okay come back over here kind of get those What's nice is if you can't reach it with a piece of paper towel, that's kind of giving you the idea of what grime, where the grime would sit, which is places you can't readily wipe with anything. So I'm trying to wait for this to get a little bit drier before we take all of this off. Okay. Like I said, you don't want too much, but you also don't want to take off too much either. You want to kind of give it that nice looking little bit of grime and also with if you're using paper towel say it's got a little bumps in it when you're dabbing try not to pick up that that pattern too much because it doesn't look as good you kind of want to wipe so it gives like a kind of a brush look at least it looks more effective that way i don't like to buy the stickers that are like he, if you go, there's a guy on Etsy that sells them named Moby. He he sells some that are um, pre-weathered. I really think they look better if you do the weathering yourself. I think a lot of times the pre-weathered stuff looks too weathered, <laughs> like ridiculously so, like more than afterlife weathered. Um, okay, so that gives you an idea of kind of how to do it. You can do a little bit on your ribbon cable too, or down here, but don't overdo that because you like the ribbon cable to kind of pop and still be color but you could do a little bit down here on the edge and maybe a little bit but rub a lot of it off um, we'll go and do the silver part next okay now for my favorite part which is doing the silver or the wear marks if this thing was aluminum obviously it's not okay one of the best things you can get to do the last part of the detail is this marker the molotov liquid chrome um, I'm using the two millimeter. They have a couple different size tips, but this is like literally the closest thing to chrome you can get. So this will be after we do this next part. I just wanted to show you what we're going to use. Okay, so get yourself a really nice janky brush. Um, it seriously makes a difference. See how messed up this brush is. Um, and then get... It's actually called Rub and Buff um, Silver. And it's kind of like a liquidy paste stuff. Um, this is more liquidy than it is. It's, it's kind of a little too liquidy, but it works fine. Um, you can also use like a, a tester's silver too. Um, just make sure you don't put too much on. So I'll just use my paper plate again. And then, as you can see, it's not supposed to be that liquidy. See how it looks kind of like toothpaste on the top there? That's what you're looking for. I don't know why this particular one has got so much in it, but... Okay, so what you're going to do is literally just come in on the side here and just get a little bit black that's falling into it. doesn't really matter because just using stuff up here don't get a lot it really takes like hardly anything see how just that little bit put like a ton on it it takes very little to do this part 
Um, so once you get a little bit on your brush, what you're doing is you're basically trying to come up with wear marks for your um, pack to make it seem more realistic. So what you're really going to want to do here is just lightly brush it on kind of areas where it's going to hit. You don't want to do like the whole thing. Um, I like to do like corners and not every corner. So like down here, this corner, you can see like this would be in the way. So this corner is not going to get hit a lot as far as where it goes. So this one would. So you can do this one and you just lightly kind of brush it in. There's nothing that irritates me more than people have so much silver on their packs that it just looks ridiculous. I mean, I get it. They could be like, oh, well, I got that much wear on my pack. No, no, you just don't know how to do it subtly. So this, the whole bumper here, this part here, you imagine all, this would get hit a lot. So you could definitely wear it a decent amount. But see, I haven't even gotten any more of this rub and buff on my brush yet. I'm still going with what what I was using. Because like I said, it, it really goes a long ways. So obviously this is going to get hit a fair amount. But you kind of want to like just hit it sporadically, not everywhere. Um, or, you know, like the whole circumference of your end filter. Um, you don't want to do that. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing, which would be hitting. Oh, see, that's a little much. And if you do put a little bit too much on it, you could use some, you don't like the spot or it's too large. You could use a little bit of, um, like paint thinner to get it off. So like I said, the wear marks wise, if you think about it, this part of the pack would be getting hit a lot because it'd be getting put in and out of the, you know, your ecto or near wherever you're keeping it. So this is going to have a fair amount of wear on it. Maybe not as much up here. I mean, maybe a little along the edges, but I feel like um, on top of your cyclotron might have just a smidge on these. So the reason why we're doing this before we do the marker is because it creates that kind of really subtle line like it got scratched, essentially. So it just kind of looks nicer than just using the pen. What the pen's going to do is really going to make it seem like you've got um, legit metal underneath. That's the idea anyways. So... You're going to go around the rest of your pack and kind of do this same, the same feel. So, I mean, this wouldn't get a lot because it's kind of protected. So I don't feel like anything in here would really need it. Maybe out here on the edge a little bit. And I'm not going nuts. So like this side of the pack would really get some too because it's going to hit those areas. But see how I'm just kind of like randomly getting it on there so you can kind of see how it is just a couple little spots it's not a ridiculous amount like I said people overdo it now I feel like this would have some heavy wear because you're putting your Neutrono on, on and off, on and off, on and off. So this is going to have some serious wear around here. So I like to really hit those corners in a heavily wear area like this too. Your, you know, your wand's going to hit this going in and out. So this is going to have some wear. Get some more of that corner. Just because it's going to bump into all that the whole time. Um, maybe a little down here. And then um, you'd go up here, and then if the crank was actually something that you were hitting, you might get a little bit up here. Just lightly, not like ridiculous amount. And then you can kind of work your way around um, 
this because it protrudes so far out. I'm picking up a little bit more of that, but see how far that silver rubbing buff goes? Like, it's ridiculous. That doesn't take anything at all. I didn't get any on my brush. I thought I did. Like I said, you'll see. Just give it a try. And you'll be like, whoa, that was too much. Been there, done that. Yeah, see, I've got a little bit too much on there. I don't want quite that much. I just want it to be on there subtly. I feel like that corner would get hit quite a bit. And maybe a little more there. Oh, gotta actually get on there. Here we go. Those would get hit. Um, if you come up here, this is gonna get hit a little bit. But not a, too much. All right, so you kind of get the idea. Don't go overboard. Do a little bit. All right, I'm going to get the marker and show you the next part. Okay, here's where we go in with the pen. Um, so I did some heavy wear marks in a couple spots on the pack, which I'm kind of showing you now, where they most likely would be, which would be on the bumper here. Um, and there's like a couple more on here, but not ginormous ones. There's one there. And then I like that one up there. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in with this pen. And you're just going to hit it with this chrome. It's probably not going to show up great on the video. But what it's going to do is when it hits the light. I know it looks kind of just not like anything special right now. But when it dries, it's literally going to appear like it's metal underneath. Um, one of the ways to kind of get this whole thing to really pop is to hit it with this. It kind of flows back into itself so you don't get that marker line as much. But wait till it dries and you've tried this. It'll literally look like your whole bumper's chrome. Which, honestly, ends up looking really nice. Okay, so now what you can do is, after you've done kind of your big wear mark areas, don't drag it over too far that it goes into the kind of feathering along the sides, because it, it won't look good. Okay, so other things you can do, too, is paint would get, like, just flat out, nicks in it just so if you just like barely touch in places around where wear marks are just really really small little dots and drags it will it'll really look nice it'll be really bright and then any one of your areas where you put um your wear marks you can go in and touch on top of it with your pen and it'll really really make it pop I know you don't necessarily realize it at first and the video is not showing that but it will really give a good appearance of silver I mean just having the testers is good but when you go back and look at it You'll see how much difference this is. Um, it does really make a difference. And then don't forget to just kind of randomly go in and just do little, little dots and dings. Like that's something I don't see a lot of people do with their packs. They just rub on along the edges. But if you do occasional little dots and nicks. It just really gives it that, you know, worn out, beat the crap up appearance. So, um, highly suggest you do this after you do that first part. You'll see what I'm talking about. But there you go. Um, I think uh, it looks pretty good. Um, so let me know what you guys think.